WNOV 860 and W293CX 106.5, Milwaukee. It's 9 a.m., time for the only Garden Talk radio show in Milwaukee. Tell your friends, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is on the air. Join us and let's grow together. Coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show, we're going to go over 12 tips that will save you time in the garden and still allow you to produce, as well as how much do you need to grow of specific varieties and plants in order to sustain yourself throughout the year. We're going to crunch the numbers. And Southern Gardener and expert Greg Key will be with us. He's going to talk about growing some of those southern crops here in the northern area. Plus, your garden questions and our garden answers. All that starts right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird, some of the realest gardeners that you'll ever know, always willing to share their knowledge, mistakes, and working to grow together. Founders of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com that contains over 1,100 garden videos to show and teach others to grow some of what they eat. Join them for the next hour as they cover practical gardening information that has worked for them and more. Now here they are. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX 106.5. Wherever you may be listening, however you may be listening, whether through those particular stations, the TuneIn app, the Simple Radio app, social media, or anywhere in between. We are live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where now each day we look outside and decide which season we're going to celebrate. Uh, I am your host, Joy Barrett. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Barrett, I am am glad to be uh, back. back. Uh, For those who were not tuned in last week or didn't catch it, give a little 30-second blurb public service announcement of what happened. Uh, So I was in the hospital last week. I had a pulmonary embolism, which is a blood clot in my lungs. They felt it was due to uh, my birth control. And not so, uncommon. Not uncommon. Um, and it can happen to anybody, whether you uh, run 3,000 miles a day or whether you work at a desk job. It it's, um, happens to just about anybody. So I'm, I got, they let me out. They let me out last Saturday afternoon. And I went back to work Monday. It was um, sometimes a bit of a challenging week, but I'm glad that um, to be here and to raise awareness that this can happen to anybody. So listen to your body. If um, if you're having some sort of issue, you're, something doesn't feel right, definitely get that looked at. Right. So just want to make uh, mention of that. It, and uh, there's a number of ways in which you can contact us here at the program. You can simply just send us an email at uh, – TWVGshow at gmail.com. You can tweet us at TWVGshow. That's our Twitter handle. You can hashtag TWVG. You can uh, call us on the Ivy Organics 3 in 1 Plant Guard hotline, Holly. And, uh, Ivy Organic 3 in 1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. That number is 414-444-5250. And And it's easy to apply as well. It's easy to apply as well. Uh, You can also sign up for our weekly email by texting TWVG to 345345. You can also sign up at, on our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, where we contain over 1,100 garden videos, uh, short and long format of uh, videos, as well as in-studio video and podcast of each and every show in its entirety, as well as segments of the shows uh, under the radio tab and the highlight tab on the main page. So you can check it out, all of season one and season two as it's being completed. So there, let's see, we want to welcome a couple of groups of people who we spoke with last week. Uh, we want to welcome those at, from the West Dallas Public Library where we did a talk on how to grow the best tomatoes. That was uh, Thursday, Tuesday? Tuesday. Like Tuesday. And then Thursday we were in New Berlin and we did 10 common garden problems and how to solve them. And we had a nice crowd there, nice crowd at both, and lots of great questions. So We want to welcome want, them. We want to welcome them. So if you want to come see us, you can go to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com click on the come see us tab and we have a couple talks this week uh we will be at uh brookfield this tuesday at 7 p.m on growing great potatoes in the ground or in containers and uh for those who may be listening north of the milwaukee area will be in random uh yeah, random lake 
uh, on Thursday with the 10 common problems you'll face in your vegetable garden. And you can, again, go to that uh, Come See Us tab. We've still got about 22 more talks in the Milwaukee area that you can attend for free. So today is April 14th, which means that it is Milwaukee Day. So us being uh, Milwaukee Radio Show hosts, enjoy your uh, Milwaukee Day, Milwaukeeans. So with that being said, let's get into 12 time-saving tips for you in your vegetable garden, assuming that sometime this year we will be in the vegetable garden. These are really good information to have. Um, we're going to go through these. We're not going to go a whole lot in depth. And a lot. Of, most of them are pretty self-explanatory, but I want to make it aware that uh, this is what you can do. You can get a big garden. You can have a nice garden, whatever size you believe is big, and still have production and not be overwhelmed, as we talked about last week, not being burnt out uh, by trying to take on too much or not having all this stuff. So one is, the first one is? You want to save half the time by learning how to garden online. Now, there are many online resources. There's YouTube videos. There's um, University Extension. Po- University Extension. There's podcasts. There's all sorts of great information online. And this is this digital age we live in. This is a positive for sure. You can watch these videos, learn how I'm having this problem. Let me just look that up. And then all of a sudden you'll find a blog post about it or an extension article about it or a video about it. So that's definitely um, a great way to save some time. Uh, yeah, and you want to make sure it's a reliable source as well. Another way is uh, use irrigation to water your crops. Uh, a lot of people, obviously this makes more sense if you have a large garden to grow in. But even on smaller uh, standpoint, uh, the Plant Booster is, is a sponsor here on the program, which it is a it's a non um, electronic means of watering your containers and it will sense that the container is getting light and it will draw it'll basically turn on and it will let the water uh permeate into the the container so you don't have to water so or that, something like oyas right um oyas are a you bury them below the ground and they are made out of a porous terracotta you put the water in there and as the soil needs that water it's going to draw it from that from that clay pot and uh, other means of drip irrigation uh, or above ground irrigation, just something that you can set and forget about it basically and the plants can get what they need. Uh, you can start from transplants to have a jump, uh, jump on the season, whether you start them indoors, whether you buy them at Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center or your favorite garden center wherever you might be out in the, in the country. They're already, you don't have to worry about grow lights, you don't have to worry about space. You go and get them, they're already hardened off. You plant them and you're good to go. Very quick, a small investment for a very large return. You buy a tomato plant for, I'm picking a number here, let's say $2. You get 20 pounds to 30 pounds of tomatoes off that plant over the growing season. Pretty good investment. So that's another way. Right. So then we have that. Um, you could use a bulb planter to transplant. A bulb planter, basically, um, if you've never seen one, it's like a cylinder with a handle on it, and it helps kind of get, loosen that soil, dig it up for you, and it'll help you transplant. Uh, makes it easier. Uh, more more than a, a little trowel or garden shovel because it actually removes that big chunk of soil. That definitely, and we use a post hole digger for our tomato plants, so yeah. that's kind of in line with that. Grow low-maintenance crops. So crops that grow easy um, and you don't have to worry about spending a lot of time thinking about them. One of those would probably be leafy greens. Leafy greens are easy to grow. Early and late in the season. Early and late in the season. Um, root crops. Root crops are typically easy to grow as well. Uh, grow perennial vegetables. Grow, plant it once and let the plant feed you through the number of years. Asparagus, rhubarb, um, raspberries, blueberries, that type of thing. Fruit trees. Plant right, all of these are, yeah. Minimum to no maintenance on these. Uh, Jerusalem artichokes uh, are another one that they will come back year and year and year after year where you don't have to do virtually anything. You might have to maintain the plant a little bit, trim it back, or, you know, take care of a minor problem. But you don't have to start them each year. You don't have to plant them each year. They're there. And if you've got, a, uh, we talked about berry plants a couple of weeks ago. If you've got a spot where you know you're going to be there for the next 10, 20, 30, whatever, put some perennials in there. That's the way to go. Asparagus will last up to 50 years in a spot, uh, and it'll, you get a harvest every cup, uh, three weeks a year. Strawberries are another one that you can use that will feed, uh, that will 
you don't have to do anything about it. Now, those are some of those are fruits. Vegetables are, you know, it, it falls in both categories. Definitely. So that's a good one. Grow wild and rambunctious vegetables. So that basically means that grow vegetables that might grow wildly um, if they reseed themselves quickly. Basically, let those crazy vegetables, crazy edibles do the work for you. And there's a whole list that we're not going to go into. You can certainly go to your favorite search engine and look that up. But the, the gamut is unlimited to what you can do. And you may already have some growing in somewhere near you that you weren't really aware of. Uh, for example, Jerusalem artichokes. There's a wild variety that people just, it looks like a weed until you dig up the roots. There's wild asparagus. Whatever it right. is, be sure you're 100% identified that plant, that it's not a... A, um, a mystery or it's a, a copycat plant where if you consume it, it can have ill effects on you. Make sure you can identify it 100% uh, before you consume anything that you're uncertain of. Then we have um, aerate your compost. Uh, the more air you put in your compost pile, uh, the typical compost pile, perfect. Uh, everybody says, oh, what's the perfect size? One cubic yard, three foot by three foot by three foot, aerate it. You're going to add more oxygen in it. You're going to add the proper amount of greens, proper amount of browns, and it's going to break down and, and, and turn into compost quicker. Get heated, uh, the core heated correctly, in which will kill the viability of the seeds in which you put in there from the plants that, you, that are being composted. Okay, yep, and then we have uh, do research before you start gardening. Grow what works in your area. We talk about this all the time. Grow what you know you're going to use, what you're going to eat. What is successful? You cannot necessarily grow a banana plant in Wisconsin. We're not in the domes <laughs> downtown, right? Um, you, you've so got you to be smart about gotta this. Got to be smart about that. There are some things that we try that we know it's not recommended for here, either outdoors or indoors. But we yet we take the opportunity and experiment with it. Uh, Yacons, root crops, South America, not supposed to be grown here in the northern climates. Grows very well. Uh, needs about nine months of growing. It really will grow good in about five and a half months. Jicama, we're going to be attempting to grow that. Not supposed to be grown up here. We're going to grow that and see what we can make happen. Um, so, you know, dwarf lime tree or dwarf dwarf fruit trees indoors. You can do that. You just want to be smart and not, you know, invest a whole lot of time and effort into that, knowing what the end result might be. Take a little, you know, two percent of your time and figure out. Okay, let me try this. If it works, escalate that time you put into it the next year. Uh, so grow nutritious soil and use good amendment. Uh, soil is the lifeblood of your plants. That's how they get their food. You feed the soil, the soil feeds the plant. Right. That's how the organic world works. That's how nature works. The leaves fall in the forest. It feeds the soil. The soil feeds the vegetation in the forest and the prairie lands, and that's how nature keeps going. That's exactly it. Um, use the mulch to cover the ground. Mulch is amazing. It helps keep in moisture. It helps smother out weeds. It helps keep uh, when soil splashes up on your plants. It helps prevent that. There's good and bad things in your soil. If you put the mulch around your soil, uh, the good things will feed your plants. The bad things, when you put the mulch around it, will not get splashed up on your plants. And the thing about mulch, and I know gardeners ask, well, why do I need to put mulch on my garden? Suppressed weeds, like Holly talked about, uh, retain moisture. But look at nature. Tell me, where in nature is the soil not covered? The soil, prairie lands, uh, in, in nature, uh, forest, the only place that the ground is not covered is the desert. Mm -hmm. Nature covers the soil to protect the life of the soil. As well, we should cover the soil in our garden in order to protect the microbial life and, and help the, build the ecosystem that we have under the soil that feeds our plants in order to feed us. And lastly... Grow crops that grow quickly. So uh, things like radishes grow in 30 days. Lettuce grows pretty quickly. you gotta keep, um, you got to keep in mind that those are uh, day-sensitive, right. light-sensitive things. So early, late in the season. Tomatoes, you can get some tomatoes that will grow in 62 days. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the hybrids will produce. Uh, beans will grow in about 60 days. So, I mean, obviously you can't pl – you, you've got to be reasonable about what quickness is. Obviously rhubarb takes about three years to get to the point where you can harvest. That's not a quick-growing plant. Beans, 60 days, 40 to 60 days. Radishes, 18 to 32 days. Um, tomatoes, as short as 60 days. Potatoes, early potatoes, you can get them as early as 60 days. Uh, so a lot of different uh, uh, choices in that realm of possibilities in order to get a quicker growing crop. And herbs, you can have them inside in your window, and you can have them growing all year round. Obviously, you can't have a whole salad full of basil leaves, but you it could. it, it it's a supplement. It's an additional flavoring that is very cheap to grow, but costly to buy. 
So when we come back, how much should you grow for a family of four? Well, we're going to crunch the numbers so you know what you might want to put in the ground so you have enough for all year long right after this. Looking for the only Garden Talk radio show on your dial? You found it. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. The Tree Diaper is an advanced plant hydration system. It is an innovative device that captures and holds the water around your plants, once full, and hydrates them slowly when the plants need it over a period of 30 days. From half to 30 gallon capacity based on your needs. And easy to install even for a first time gardener. The Tree Diaper reduces weeds, protects plants, enhances root growth, and prevents overwatering. Whether you're growing trees, vegetables, flowers, house plants, in containers, or the ground, your plants will benefit greatly by allowing the Tree Diaper to do the work for you. Find out more at TreeDiaper.com. Made in the USA. An Oya is an unglazed porous clay pot with a short neck and a wider belly. Bury your Oya neck deep in your raised bed, container, or ground garden and let the Oya do your watering by releasing water as needed. How? By soil moisture tension for all you techies out there. This is an eco-friendly, efficient, ancient way to water your plants using up to 70% less water than other irrigation methods. It saves you time and is easy to install. Find a retailer through DrippingSpringsOils.com. Smart watering, easy gardening. Hostels wants to help you grow your own food. From seed starting supplies, hand tools, drip irrigation, harvesting equipment, and a complete line of all-natural pest control solutions, they've got you covered. Keep your garden weed-free with their time-tested, American-made wheel hose that are built to last a lifetime. And the Precision Garden Seeders have proven design for planting a wide variety of seeds. Hoss Tools has what you need to get the most out of your growing space, large or small. Free shipping and outstanding customer service. Shop online or request a free catalog at HossTools.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants, will not wash off, and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit BobX.com. B O B B. BDX.com. Zaz Products, offering great quality supplements that can help personal health and increase longevity. Committed to bringing you the highest quality products at the lowest price. Find out more at ZazProducts.com. Rebel Green, responsibly made natural products that are good for you and the environment. Made in the USA, plant-based, vegan, and always toxic-free. Find out more at RebelGreen.com. Dandelions. This Garden Fun Fact is sponsored by ManureTea.com. Get your three-pack today. Drop the tea bag in water, let steep, and feed your soil. Not your plants. 100% organic. Find out more at ManureTea.com. Always free shipping. Dandelions have a taproot that can extend to 15 feet deep, typically 18 inches. The taproot is very useful to reduce compaction soil in your garden. They can draw nutrients such as nitrogen from the soil and concentrate it in the leaves and the roots. Dandelion seeds can also travel up to five miles. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food, a fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system, solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable, organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway, any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG125 to save $125 and get free shipping, a $250 value on the purchase of an Eco Garden Original Garden Unit, available only in stone color. Purchases must be made to the website EcoGardenSystems.com forward slash store. Offer valid through December 31st, 2018, available to the contiguous United States. Hi, I'm John Lewandowski, retail manager of Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. Now, I'm not going to tell you about our awesome dome-grown plants, our beautiful pottery, or our 40 varieties of landscape materials. What I am going to tell you is that Blue Mills is a local, independent, family-owned garden center that truly cares about your garden or landscape project. So if you're looking for that one garden center that actually cares about you, come to Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. 
We've been treating our customers like family since 1955. Blue Mills 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Flame Engineering, Eco Garden Systems, Bob X, Plant Success, Beans and Barley, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Assassin, Manure Tea, The Gardener's Hollow Way. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the program here on this dreary, rainy Wisconsin Milwaukee morning. Um, if you've tuned in throughout the country, it rains a lot here in Milwaukee in the last couple of weeks, just cold, dreary. But what we can do with that opportunity is prepare ourselves for knowing how much we can plant in our garden based on uh, our family size. So we're going to go over the numbers. This is what? This is based on a family of four through the growing season, through a growing the gardening year. Um, so some of these are perennials. Some of these are annuals. And what we want to do is... Uh, for an annual, or let's go. Let's go with a perennial. Let's go with asparagus first. Asparagus is a popular plant, especially um, for families or just anybody really. But it's a nice perennial vegetable because it grows nicely once you get it established. Which and is you buy. You can start it from seed. Or you can start it from one year root or two year root. The third year is whenever you're going to be able to start using this and harvesting it. So ideally, you want to plant about forty plants. Is what they're saying. For a family of four for yeah, the year. Yeah. Okay. So now, you, you can pickle this as well. You didn't find it to be that appealing when we pickled the asparagus. It was all right. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was okay. Um, so we got that. Uh, beets. Beets are popular, uh, becoming more popular. Either you love or you hate beets, it seems like. But you want to do, it's a spring and fall crop. You want to do about 10, uh, the ideal would be 10 square feet of beets. A 10-foot so t- row, yeah. row, yeah. Yeah, so 10-foot row of beets. Uh, or not, sorry, 10-foot row beets, so that would be just a 10-foot long row beets, and then you plant them. Um, you probably need about a foot on either side. Yeah, give or not on either side, but in the middle of that foot, so six inches on either side. And you space those about three three to five inches apart. Um, let's see, peas, 10-foot row, succession planting. That means uh, you plant in the spring, you plant in the fall. Let's talk about succession planting, and this can be for a variety of different crops. Yeah, so basically when you succession plant, you plant some uh, some of the plants, and then you go behind them a couple of weeks later, you plant more. And then a couple of weeks after that, you plant a few more, um, just in blocks of like five, ten. And so that way you're harvesting kind of continuously throughout the season. Uh, green beans are known for this, the bush bean varieties. Uh, 15 foot row here for a family of four, and you plant that every week. You plant another row, and then you have it throughout the season because bush beans. Uh, will take 40 to 60 days to reach maturity, and they'll last uh, their production for about two to three weeks on that. So that's another thing in which you can grow. Uh, pole beans, uh, This uh, the, the list that we found was three poles uh, single planting, which means I, I would say a pole bean, uh, it looks like a little teepee, so you're going to have eight to, eight to 12 plants around the poles growing up. Uh, so that's three different, so that approximately... 36 plants. Now, those are going to produce all the way through frost, or up to frost, the pole beans are. They're going to take about 80 days to reach maturity. They're going to produce. The only uh, thing I would warn you about is if we have a very warm or late growing season, like we're talking mid-October, late October, you can potentially get bean rust, which is an airborne uh, pathogen thing that that when it'll attach to the leaves, and then when you touch them, it's actually like you touched a piece of rusty metal. Those beans are yeah, – you don't eat those beans. No. Or you don't burn the plants. You dispose of the plants in the trash and not the compost. So, But uh, if I was choosing whether to grow pole beans or bush beans, I would grow pole beans every time because of the longevity of the production as well as the elevation. You can get them up. And instead of having to plant a 15-foot roll of pole beans you can get, or a 15-foot roll of bush beans, you can get multiple – pole bean clusters or groupings in that one right. space. And your brassicas, their uh, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, all um, even chard would be five, about five plants, and kale, five plants each. So you want to um, 
kind of figure that out. They're recommending for the brassicas about five plants each. Now, what I would suggest, and, and we've done this a number of years, and, and we've learned so, we don't, so you don't have to make the mistake, we're unable to grow broccoli or cauliflower at all. We cannot get it to grow. We can't get it to what it's called head or develop that head that we're familiar with. So instead of growing it in our garden or attempting each year to grow it and having a failure, uh, we, we did it about four years in a row and we said we're, we're, we're done trying this. Just go to the farmer's market. There's a number of great farmer's markets here in, the, in Milwaukee. And don't think that if the farmer's market is huge, you have to go there. I go to the Brown Deer Farmer's Market. It's close, it's close on, on the way home and it's smaller, but they have just a phenomenal amount of vegetables at a really great price. Well, let's talk about summer squash or more pre- predominantly zucchini. Uh, if you grow any type of zucchini, you know that you don't have to have much in order to have a lot. So it says two hills, a single planting, multiple varieties. So you could do a crook neck yellow zucchini or a straight neck yellow zucchini and a black beauty zucchini, uh, green zucchini or other varieties of green zucchini. Uh, I always and w- I always want to plant more, and always have the problem if I got too much rather than not enough. Yeah, but if you're limited on space, right? If you're limited on space, yeah, you definitely want to keep that in mind. And if you have too much zucchini, we found a magnif- magnificent canning recipe, which is mock pineapple. You take and, and we won't go through the whole recipe. That it is on the website if you look it up. Mock zucchini or uh, mock pineapple. You take zucchini chunks, infuse it with pineapple juice, and you can it, and people have no clue that you're eating zucchini. It's actually like little chunks of pineapple. It's a phenomenal... uh, It's delicious. Yeah. Let's talk about tomatoes here because everybody wants to grow tomatoes. Uh, We grow probably more tomatoes than uh, we should. We grow about 100 to 110 uh, tomatoes plants and about 45 varieties. So for a single, uh, for a family of four approximately, it's five plants. It's single planting. You want to space those about every two feet. Um, and then you get your five plants. So if I were to only plant five tomato plants, I would plant um, I plant probably two different paste varieties, um, some sort of cherry variety, and then uh, kind of like a black crim and a brandy wine. Or slicing tomato. Yeah. Because you have to know before you plant what your intentions are because it's very difficult to make tomato juice or canned tomatoes if all you have is cherry variety tomatoes. It takes a long time and it doesn't work very well. So... Um, and then turnips, a uh, 10-foot row, spring and fall, uh, you can do that. Uh, and then let's talk about peppers because everybody, not everybody grows peppers, but a lot of people do hand-in-hand hand with their um, salsa with their salsa or what whatnot. Uh, three, three plants, I would agree, for a family of four would be a good idea, um, three plants. And then they don't talk about herbs here, but herbs are easily done in containers. So if you want to grow a couple pots of herbs, Along the side of the garden, that's a good idea, too. Uh, let's see here. Uh, leaf lettuce in the spring and fall, 10-foot uh, row. Now, I will caution you. Leaf lettuce. You want a little, plant a little. If you want a lot, plant a little, okay, because the leaf lettuce is per- very predominant. Spinach, on the other hand, if you want a lot of spinach, plant a lot of spinach. Lettuce, you just need a little bit. When harvesting your leaf lettuce, um, some people may have it planted, some people may not. When you harvest your leaf lettuce, only cut the plant back. This is a cut and come again. If you cut it, it will regrow. Cut the leaves only 50% in height. Leave half the plant alone. Just top, cut, top the, cut the top half of the leaves. The reason why you do this is you do – if you most people will just cut it almost flush with the ground and then in a couple of weeks or whatever it will start growing again. You're going to get more lettuce if you cut half the plant off because you're not putting the plant in a – Uh, dormancy or recovery stage. If you cut it too low, ground level, the roots go into a dormancy stage for up to 17 days until it can recover and begin to regenerate the nutrients it needs in order to put the top growth on. So cut it half, it will regenerate much, much quicker, and you're going to get much more lettuce uh, throughout the season uh, before it gets too warm. And some people, uh, we've got a friend in California who is able to grow leaf lettuce all summer long in Southern California because she mimics the shortness of the days by continually to grow it in partial shade on her, uh, on her deck. So that's another thing. So these are just some of the many different uh, numbers. Obviously, if you like something, plant more of it. If you're going to can it for, later, uh, for storage and you want a lot of it, 
plant a lot of it, buy a lot of it uh, during the summer months. Some people don't garden at all. They just buy at the farmer's market and then can it because it's so affordable and it's, the return on investment is well worth it in the end. Well, when we come back, Greg Key will be with us. He is a southern gardener who's going to teach us about growing some of the warm weather crops here in the north. Got a question? Email the show at twvgshow at gmail.com. Beans and Barley Marketing Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh used carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. I know you're looking for an alternative to harsh chemicals, but you want professional strength products. BioSafe's Garden Line gives you just that. Professionally used for 20 years, available to homeowners. Organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products from plant food, fertilizer, to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. BioSafe's products can be used around children, pets, wildlife, so you can enjoy your yard more. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Find us on Facebook at BioSafe home and garden and visit us at biosafe.net to learn more get 10 percent off your next purchase at biosafe.net by using coupon code twvg at checkout the number one key to healthy productive plants are the roots starting from seed to full-grown plants rootmaker.com has the answer from seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots creating a fabulous root system Never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. Rootmaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit Rootmaker.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at FlameEngineering.com. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. The Gardener's Hollow Leg, the debris and harvesting bag you wear, comes with its own belt attachment, perfect for doing light pruning, weeding, harvesting on the ground or on a ladder, and many other uses. Find out more at TheGardener'sHollowLeg.com. Save 10% by using the word veggies at checkout. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from PlantSuccessOrganics.com that will greatly increase your plant's germination, ability, and healthier root structure. You can increase seed sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponic root cutting, seed sprouting, cocoa core, and soil. PlantSuccessOrganics.com carries powder, granule, and tablet form of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil to give your plant the optimal opportunity to produce incredible harvests. For more information and to purchase, visit PlantSuccessOrganics.com. Wouldn't you love to get more from your growing space? By utilizing the square foot garden method and properly spacing your plants, Seeding Square will optimize and organize your veggie garden to grow more greens and less weeds. The square foot color-coded seed spacer is a great tool for any garden, ground, container, or raised bed, and all experience levels, even little green thumbs. For more information, visit SeedingSquare.com. Seeding Square is gardening made simple. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Haas Tools, Tree Diaper, Root Maker, Seeding Square, Rebel Green, Dripping Springs Oya, Zaz Products, Shield and Seal, Pomona Universal Pectin. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Kelly Baird. 
You know, when it comes to uh, great news, even though the weather is horrible here in Milwaukee, uh, Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center is now open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, for their bulk supplies. So they've got over 40 varieties of landscape materials, sand, uh, gravel, wood chips, compost, that you can go and, and see what you want, and they will deliver. Uh, they will also do consultations for your landscape needs. Uh, if you want to not cut grass this year, you can have them come out and cut your grass. Not for free. They, it's, a, it's a thing that you have to pay them. But they'll do all that landscape work for you so you can go and enjoy your life and let them take care of the hard work for you. Uh, if you want to go see that line of over 40 materials for your land, landscape, uh, Blue Mills is located where, Holly? At 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield. Uh, BlueMills.com or call 414-282-4220. The official garden center of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Well, Holly, let's go to the Ivy Organics 3-1 Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our next guest. Greg Key is from Norman Park, Georgia, and in 2009 found, founded the Haas Tool Company after seeing that tools he found in the local hardware store didn't really meet the needs of market gardener or, or home gardeners and Haas Tools of HaasTools.com with knowledgeable about growing all types of vegetables. He's going to help us northern gardeners with some tips um, and techniques that southern gardeners know. Welcome to the program, Greg. Well, thank you very much. Glad to be here. Well, we love to bring people on the program who are much more knowledgeable. That's what this program is all about, to help all of us learn how to grow uh, vegetables and fruits successfully. Well, good deal. That's what we're all about. We're about making things easy and helping people grow their own food. Now, it is all about the soil when it comes to gardening for us specifically and for most of our listeners. What and how do you prepare your soil? Um, what's the best way if you have clay soil? Well, we actually have a sandy loam soil. So we have a topsoil that's kind of blackish, but it's very fluffy and it has a lot of sand in it. So uh, it's pretty easy to work, and we don't have that much problem. But we do have a lot of people that have clay-type soils, and clay type soils have their benefits. Clay soils have a very high cation exchange value, and what that means is that they simply hold nutrients a lot better than the sandy soils that we have. However, they can be hard to work. So we always recommend people to add as much organic matter as you can to those clay soils to improve the tilt. And the tilt simply means to structure the soil. So we want to improve that clay soil so that we can work it. Now, clay soils are great because they don't take near the amount of nutrients that we have to apply to our sandy soils. Matter of fact, clay soils take about half the amount of nutrients that our soils take. So they, hold, they have a charge that holds those nutrients really good. And you can grow a great garden in clay-type soils. You have a problem with water. They don't drain as well as our sandy type soils do. But once you you know you improve it with those organic matter and get it so that you can work it, you can grow a lot of great produce, and vegetables, and fruits in clay soils. Well, let's talk about a, a a fruit that many people love to grow and do not have very much success is, which is watermelon. What is your keys to growing great watermelon? Because uh, on your videos on on your website. You grow great watermelons. How can we do that? Well, it's funny you should ask that. We actually live in the watermelon capital of the world, and we love to grow watermelons in our garden. Uh, that's one of our favorite things we like to grow. But up north, they can be challenging. And one reason is, is they take 80 days to get to maturity. So it can be a long uh, crop. And we know you guys up north don't have a very long summer. So one thing that I would recommend doing is starting those plants inside and get those plants up to pretty good size and transplant them. And that will shorten your growing season and give you a head start so you can get them out there a little bit quicker and get them up and get them off to maturity before the cold sets in. Now, normally you need to wait about 70 degrees to plant. So if you do those transplants inside and when the weather gets right and you go out there and plant them, you can probably shave off anywhere from three to four weeks then grow them by seed. Another thing is don't try to grow any of the hybrids or the seedless varieties. That really gets complicated. Leave that to the professional farmer. Try to grow some of these heirlooms because they're a lot easier to grow and they're a lot more forgiving. The one we grow is one called Crimson Sweet. 
But my friend Jerry that owns Baker Creek Company really raves about an orange glow variety, and it has an orange meat in it, and it's really good for the home gardener. I've grown it before, too. It, it's got a really good flavor, but it doesn't have a really thick rind, so it doesn't ship well. So it's not one that a farmer would want to grow, but from a home gardener standpoint, it's a great one to grow. So any of the heirloom varieties is going to be a lot more forgiving. Well, thank you. And, and here in the north, now is the time for us to plant asparagus. We've never grown asparagus, but we do. What do our listeners need to know about it to make sure we can have a great crop? Well, first of all, you need a lot of patience because asparagus takes three years before you can start harvesting it. Three years is a long time to baby something along, but that's what you got to do. you got to create a great root system there so that you can start uh, harvesting that asparagus on the third year. Now, asparagus being a perennial, it has some problems with weeds. So that's one of the biggest problems with asparagus is weeds. And what we use is we use a combination of drip irrigation so we can water exactly where the asparagus is at, and we don't try not to water the weeds. And also we use compost as a mulch, and we use wheat straw as a mulch, and that helps keep our weed problem down so that our asparagus can flourish. So having irrigation underneath there so we're not watering everything, good compost and um, good wheat straw is probably some of the keys. And there again, you need you need a lot of patience growing asparagus. But it is one of those crops that just keeps on giving. I mean, you can easily get 10 to 15 years out of asparagus, and it's one of our favorite things that we grow. Well, you talked about weeds and, and weeding, and that's a common conversation that we have here on the program some people, and, and we found this to be true in our garden, if we leave some weeds in the garden, some of those bad insects, uh, aphids, for example, will attach themselves to those weeds uh, and not our, our plants in which we're trying to grow. What, what are some other things that we need to know about weeds and, and how to deal with them? You talked about mulching with the asparagus there. Yeah, well, in a vegetable garden situation, the key to weeding is getting them while they're small. Once they get up and get ahead of you, it's hard to control them. So we advocate st- staying out there in the garden and staying on top of it. So when these weeds are small, they're very easy to go out there and you can cultivate and you can get them out of the way. Another thing with soils is after you get a rain and those soils be- become a little bit compacted, that is when your weed seeds start to germinate. Weed seed will not cult- I mean, germinate in cultivated soils. So anytime you have a pretty good rain and your soil is kind of beat down and compacted, you want to go out there and cultivate those soils and fluff them up. And when you do that, that keeps that weed seed from germinating and staying on top of them when they're small. So, you know, you really need to go out there we go every day, but I recommend going at least once every day or two and just getting your hoe out or whatever your favorite cultivating tool is and go through there and if you see a weed, Whack it while it's small because it's a lot easier to control the end than after it gets up. And, and I want to go back on that and kind of go more of the science of it. You're disturbing the, the, the – you're fluffing the soil up because the, the, the roots or the seed doesn't – it has too many air pockets to germinate correctly. Is that what you're kind of exactly, referring to? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. When you, take, when you take that ideal condition away from that weed seed to germinate, then it's not going to germinate. And that's what we want to do is we want to make that soil fluffy so it doesn't have a very compacted, and it don't have a lot of moisture hitting that weed seed, so it won't germinate. Now, um, so contaminated compost, any compost, no matter where you get it free or bought, you can't look at it and say, oh, uh, you know, it looks good. What do we need to know when we're, when we're getting compost? Well, you know, compost is one of those magical ingredients for us. It can make you look like a hero. Compost is wonderful when it's done right. The problem we've had in the last few years is there is some chemicals, some synthetic chemicals out there that can get into the compost and cause some major problems. One of them is a lawn chemical that a lot of your lawn companies will spray on the grass and things, and it's called corpyrolid. That's the active ingredient in uh, a chemical called lawn trail that's used a lot in the lawn care industry. And it has a very long residual. So if you take those grass clippings, that has been treated with this chemical called chlorpyrrolid, and you compost it, it can actually live throughout that process and give damage to your garden. There's another one called pickleram that's used in the ag industry and is sprayed on a lot of pastures and hay fields. So if you get 
compost that has materials made that has been sprayed or treated with these two chemicals, you can very easily have some contaminated compost. And that can cause some huge problems in your garden. And plants of the nightshade family are more susceptible to these chemicals than any others. So you're going to see your potatoes and your tomatoes start showing damage first. And they normally start with a cupping effect of the leaf, and that cupping will be upwards. So that, that leaf will cup upwards, and when you see that, that's a, that's a sign that you've got some type of uh, pesticide injury to your plant, whether it be drip from somewhere else or if you have used compost, you definitely want to make sure that it's free of those compounds so that you don't get this type of damage because it can be very discouraging. Well, you're, you're the uh, founder of Haas Tools. What are, like, two recommended tools that you would say, if, if a gardener says, I want two tools, what would you say that they need to have from, from the HaasTool.com website? Well, if you're growing a pretty good-sized vegetable garden, uh, say like a 20 by 50 or 20 by 20, something like that, and you're growing it flat, the wheel hoe has got to be the, the, ha- the got-to-have tool. This tool has been around for over 100 years, and it's been proven over and over again. And basically what it is, it's just a hole on wheels. But there's all kind of attachments you could put on there to do anything from laying drip tape to weeding your garden to making a fur to healing your potatoes to healing your corn. And that's probably the most versatile tool for somebody that's growing a decent-sized vegetable garden. Now, for the person that's just growing in raised beds or this an urban gardener, we have a guy that's a blacksmith in Missouri that makes this tool for us. We call it the single-time cultivator. And it's a small tool that can easily get in between the plants and in those tight places to weed. Because most of the time, that's where we have our problem at, is in between the plants and those tight places. And this single-time cultivator is handmade in Missouri and it's heat-treated. And it's easy to get in those cracks and crevices and get in those hard-to-reach tools. I mean, hard-to-reach weeds. Well, thank you very much, Greg. We appreciate you having having uh, coming on, and we uh, got some great information. And we appreciate you. the sponsorship. And, again, HossTools.com has all more tools that you can shake a stick at to, to help you with your garden, whether large or small. And we'll be back right after this with your garden questions and our garden answers. If you have a gardening question, now is the time to call in on the IVOrganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline at 414-444-5250. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Woodman's is a Wisconsin-based family-owned company founded in 1919. They offer low prices in every single aisle every day. No need to carry a discount card. From produce to meat to international to natural and organic all offered at the lowest possible prices. Over 60,000 products at every store. Service and savings every day. They're employee-owned to help you save money. They also offer online shopping for pickup and delivery, working to save you more money. Visit woodmans-food.com to find the nearest location. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, you and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Paul Earth Wood Treatment All-in-One Preservative and Stain offers lifetime protection and creates a unique silver-aged wood finish. All ingredients are non-toxic, eco-friendly, perfect for garden beds and veg trunks. Find out more at tallearth.com. Free shipping on all orders. Use coupon code W-I-S-C-O-N-V-E-G to save 15% off orders placed at tallearth.com. 
Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers, and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Keep your garden growing and your grass green with a Chapin G3 6-2-D Professional Hose-In Sprayer. Easily fertilize your lawn and garden and control pests. Just fill the tank with solution, select the mixing ratio, attach a garden hose, and spray. One 32-ounce tank will spray up to 362 gallons of diluted concentrate. Find online or order through Lowe's, Home Depot, Do It Best Hardware. See the full line of Chapin products at www.chapinmfg.com. I want a garden center that listens to and understands my needs. I want to buy my gardening products from a local business with strong ties to the community. All I want is a garden center that truly values their customers. It seems like everyone is selling plants these days, but I'm having a hard time finding quality. I take pride in my garden, so I want my garden center to take pride in their products. Where will you be going for all of your gardening needs this season? Blue Mel's Garden Center. We are your answer. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is brought to you by the following. Handy Safety Knife, BioSafe, Tall Earth, Chapin International, The Plant Booster, Ivy Organics, Woodman's Market, Blue Mel's Landscaping Garden Center. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. We're going to go right to the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. We have a question. Caller, you are on the air. Caller, you're on the air. Yes, good morning. Can you tell me, is there any place locally that where one can go and purchase a raised garden bed? I don't want a big one. I want kind of a smaller one. Uh, you're talking like something like a four by four square. Yes, okay. Four by four. I, I'm almost certain that um, Home Depot would have uh, small raised bed kits uh, in their garden center uh, of some nature of like that. Um, it, it, some may be pre-fashioned. Others you can simply go to like your let's say Home Depot and they can take and cut the lumber to uh, an eight footer into two four by four foot pieces and you can attach it that way with some nails too. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Uh, if you have a question, we've got a few minutes left in the program. You can call on the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. and uh, three in, uh, Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn. Insects and rodents protects newly installed plants and trees. Shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can call in 414-444-444. 5250. Had a lot of questions coming on uh, this week via social media, email, Twitter, all of those places. Uh, one is I want to start rhubarb from seed, but I want to put it in a container. Well, we, we've done that. How large of a container is needed for rhubarb? Well, as big as you can get, let's be honest. But we have, I think it's like a 32-gallon storage tub that we've put holes in the bottom of it. Now, after about this is going on the third year that it's grown from seed. You'll start your seed, you know, February, March in that time, and then you plant it out during the warmer portions of the year. A lot of recommendations say you got to bring that tub indoors into a uh, like a garage or basement and make it go into dormancy and keep it warm enough, but not too cold, uh, not too warm. We leave it outside year round. It has flourished. It has grown like crazy. Uh, we've got it in. Uh, we've got one in that large container, 32 gallon storage container, and then we've got one in a 10 gallon terracotta plastic like pot. Uh, both of them will have to be divided here in the next year, but you can do it in just a normal size container, as big as you possibly can. Um, they, this person was at our talk at the Germantown Library on Strawbill Gardening. They they liked it. They said that we that you could. You're typically not supposed to use hay bales instead of straw, and it does say in the book not to use it. However, um, you can grow in hay. The problem is is that straw has this moisture holding capacity, but once the hay breaks down. Um, you are able to still grow in it. Yeah, it just if you, it, it's it's real cheaper to get the straw, and uh, it worked just fine. If you have the straw available, go ahead and do it. If you have the hay available, it will work either way. 
Uh, is black 10-gallon grow bags effective uh, versus the root maker ones that you have as a sponsor for the program? I saw them on Amazon. Well, the black ones will work. The advantages to the root maker ones that we have that's a sponsor of the program is they have 1 to 60-gallon grow bags, and they are heat-tempered. They have a white coating on it that actually repels some of the heat during the warmest portions of the month of the, of the year. And if you can keep your roots cooler, the plant's going to be happier and kind of produce more. Those black ones absorb the heat uh, very, very quickly. So we always love when we get questions coming via all these platforms. Uh, Adam asked, my seedling stems are purple. Is this a bad thing? If so, what might be the remedy? Well, Adam, I would not fertilize unless the bottom of the leaves of your tomato plants, uh, seedlings, are purple. If it's just the stem, don't worry about it. That could be a variety of different issues. Uh, it could be temperature change. It could be a light issue. The seedling will be okay if the, purple, if the stem is just purple. The, only, the other issue is if underneath the leaf is purple, then it's a phosphorus um, deficiency, and, and then that would be the way you could go a liquid fertilizer at quarter of the strength, or even a compost tea. Mupu tea would work uh, very well for that. Uh, another tomato question. Uh, Shalia asked... Some of my tomato leaves are turning yellow and have dry spots. What is the problem? She also attached a photograph, and if you do have an issue, we do appreciate a photograph that you can send as we can help better identify the problem that you may be facing. Well, the simple answer to this with your tomato plants, your seedlings uh, being yellow and having some dry spots, it is uh, potentially too much water or not enough light. If the roots are soggy and waterlogged, uh, just uh, just to name a few reasons here, if there's too much water, it's just like an agricultural world. If, if it rains too much and the corn is setting in like a pondish type, a low area in the field, it will turn very, very yellow because it's, it, it can't get the oxygen it needs and it can't get the nitrogen it needs in order to green and properly photosynthesize. Now, if uh, those are the two simplest answers. There is a tremendous amount of other potential issues that could be the issue. My suggestion would be to just remove the damaged leaves. If it's not going to take more than 25% of the leaf structure of your seedling, remove those bad or damaged leaves or limbs because the plant is going to try to be in a, re- in a, a recovery mode or a, 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 a fixing mode with, without uh, and then lacking on the production or growth of the plant. So cut those bad limbs off and bad leaves off if you're not removing more than 25% of the total canopy of the plant. Let's see. Shalit says, thank you. Just got my seeds from in my garden a few days ago, and I can't wait to uh, plant them. I haven't had much luck with germination from other seed companies. Well, in my gardener, they go through a rigorous germination test. They grow them in their gardens the year before they actually are going to sell them to you to make sure that they are going to do what they intend to do, as well as if the germination rate is not high enough, they actually send those seeds back to the farmer or the gardener, or the, their broker, essentially, and say, hey, these are no good. Money back, give us our money back, or give us better seeds, because we're not selling these to our customers. So you will have very good success with that. Um, can onion seeds or any other seeds be dehydrated in a dehydrator to get them to that curing state? Sometimes we want to save seeds that we get from the grocery store or farmer's market. This is a touchy question because if the internal portions of the seeds gets too hot, it kills the germination opportunities that the seed has naturally. So the best thing you can do, whether onions or squash or tomatoes, is let them, uh, tomatoes, you go through a fermentation process for three days and let them dry naturally on a plate after you rinse the seeds off. So let's just, let's just take bean seeds, let's just take pumpkin seeds, squash seeds. Pull them out of the container, uh, the, 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 the squash or the, the fruit. I'll rinse them off and then just dry them on a ceramic plate. That's the easiest. Out of, out of direct sunlight, away from direct heat, and just let them naturally dry over a couple of weeks. That's really going to be your best uh, chance to have the best type, uh, a best success when it comes to germinating those seeds when you want them to be germinated. 
We are out of time, and we appreciate yours. Programming note, join us next week where we will be discussing the importance and value of having school gardens. And the second segment, we're going to take more of your garden questions. We've gotten so many questions. I want to address these at the appropriate time of year. So we're going to talk about uh, your questions, and you can call in, as well as uh, we'll do them from the social media email platforms, uh, as well as author of the Straw Bell Garden book, Joel Karsten, will be with us. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can find that under the radio tab at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and full-length podcast and in-studio videos. Want a specific topic or individual interview? You can find that in podcast and video form on the highlight tab on the main page on the right-hand side. Till next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You've been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcast, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communication Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.